overpasses here. For me, I feel like um, I feel like Milesports. I'm expecting them to have a difficult time on their T side. My active rebellion. The producer's like cable down, cable. I give a damn. If I, if I, I feel like they're going to have uh, difficulty on their T side. I think it's. I think the map is won or lost by how successful Milesports are on their T side. Essentially. I think if they have, uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, or at if least they get ten rounds. I think they win. In my win condition for uh, for phase is having a good CT side. Yeah, so it's basically basically Essentially the same thing. Yeah. the same, yeah. Yeah, more or less the same thing. Yeah, and uh, I'm curious to see what form Chris J is on today because that's uh, he's been a bit crazy recently, and I don't know what the consistency will be like. Well, dust dust two is is the golden map for Chris J. Which is coming up later on, but for now, overpass. Um, not not so much of the. You know, it's going to be harder to have a successful picky style, at, especially on the on the T side. I think. Um, well, in fairness, I think I think it's oh, it's 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 quite clearly more difficult on both sides to to uh, be a picky orpa, which is a style that he likes to engage. Um, so, I do wonder. If Chris J tries to be aggressive on on the CT side, how he chooses to do that because it's uh, it's precarious. It's not impossible to be aggressive by any means on the CT side, but I feel like it's a lot more dangerous. And if he goes wrong, then you can lose two players quickly, let alone one. Because I think, especially as a solo pusher, it's really hard. You need your support from your rifle. So either you're gonna maybe pick one or two, maybe even three players, or you're probably gonna lose two players and maybe one if you're lucky. We're going to find out, because it started. It's begun. It started. So Carrigan has a diffuse kit. He's the guy with the knowledge. He's been to the, to, to the uh, bomb defusal school. He's got, the, he's got that knowledge. He's got that, uh, that kit. And he's got a smoke grenade as well. So, and he can even do it in a smoke, James. He doesn't even have to see. He can do it in a, inside of a smoke. That's how good he is. I saw, uh, I think it was last year when I was in Dallas, I saw a, poli a policeman in, in a bomb defusal kit, actually. I think they were just running some training kind of thing. Anyway, we've got Mouseport slowly creeping in. I do wonder if they're going to go for the crouch past this angle, which, which doesn't basically doesn't work. People keep doing it, but it does leave you exposed in certain angles. So Mouseport's currently just standing there with, with four people indeed, because trying to do that crab walk, that crab walk doesn't work, guys. doesn't work. It's false. It's a false god. Ico goes down while uh, phase, uh, AZ runs distraction, allowing Kiyoshima to get a kill. And now he will run distraction. Spitty jumping up with the burst fire and he will fail miserably, carrying the bomb as well. In this time, Lowell's been trying to cut off any rotation towards short. No rotation required, Lowell. Now you are one versus four. Free fire. So again, if you're just joining us, this is Kiyoshima's return to the active roster of phase. Replacing Jacob, who presumably has been benched as Carrigan once was. Get benched. Well, Lowell's going to be trying to work his hardest, but he can't get it done. It's too much. It's too much to ask for. Why do they ask for so much? One to zero for FaZe. And that is awesome for them because, again, my win condition was that they need to have a strong CT side. I feel like their T side is, is likely. It's not always going to be true, of course, but I think most of the time it's not going to be as strong especially considering that the leadership is new and, and you tend to struggle on the T sides more, of course, as there's more decisions to be made, more coordination to have as a T side than on the CT side where you can rely on a bit more of your uh, your old knowledge and the positions are more static, the decisions are less complex. More about hitting the shots and knowing the nades, knowing the plays. And what? Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say what's also interesting is, you know, Kishima and Jacob going backwards and forwards. They, they did share some roles Cash B uh, or CT side rather is is one that I like to point out. There were some changes to Jacob's position once uh, Kiyoshima came in, but I mean, is is he just are they just instantly swappable in all the same positions, or is there somewhere that's more ideal? Obviously, when you change roster with a team, one of the biggest problems is uh, if one player is forced to play out of position, somebody he's not familiar with all the nuances of then life can get difficult. So that's something we have to bear in mind here for FaZe. If Kishima's replacing Jacob when they used to play on the team at the same time, then that means Kishima's not going to be in all the uh, normal roles, potentially. 
so that may cause additional disorganization bring in mind that uh, Carrigan is still fairly fresh and new to the team as well so far so good on this anti-eco round Mouse sports with a mixed investment but a complete failure pretty much <clears throat> yeah, and it's, it's actually quite fun if you ever sp uh, speak to Kiyoshima. Like, when I first spoke with spoke to him in real life, I was really surprised how insanely good his English is. So he's got, like, amazingly good English. It's very, very, very clear. His accent is is very, very good. Um, so Has he got a northern accent? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. I think really he is. sure he does not. I think, I think he lives on top of like that. That would just be weird. North of London, at least. So this is a bit of a formality. Um, quite curious to see how some of the roles for uh, Lowell uh, moving on to the, the CT side. I mean, it's still it's still fairly early days with Lowell. He's not been on the lineup for too long. Musk, it, it surely is only about a month at this point. Surely, something something around that, I would say. So looks pretty good here for Phase overall. I wonder how many. I wonder which team has more fans. Five. It must be Phase. Must have have the most fans. They're, they're CS right. fans or yeah, overall C fans. CS fans. Fans of the team. Um, I mean, Germans are going to be fans of mouse sports. Yeah. Because there's no one else to be fans of. Because I know that Phase has like a, a big following. Like a and 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 they always had. They were always the flashy team with all the kind of individual aim stars and, and you know. So I I do wonder if that's still the uh, if it's still the case that Phase have loads of fans. I like their stickers. Like I'm fans loads. of their stickers. I have a phase sticker on my uh yeah, that's nice. on my on my M4. My silent M4. Actually it reminds their logo is similar to Fatality's one, but we'll move forwards now. We have an aggressive push from Rain. Going really deep. This reminds me of uh, I think it was Kier it might be Kirby yep. um yesterday on Overpass. He was making that push, that same push, but he was going around the bench instead. And it goes one for one. Nico makes the play. And Nico is a bit scary, but he'll get traded. So three versus three, and there's so much time left in the round. Yeah, this is quite the war of attrition. Maybe it will be, will be like dust two after all. Three mouse sports players slowly moving towards the B bomb site. There's a smoke in, in the uh, monster tunnel, which may slow down the proceedings. Oh, Lowe's going to peek. Good timing for him. Kishima smoking his hand. Chris J gets ruined. Flashbang comes in. Lowell manages to avoid it, but uh, Spitty can't. And down Spitty will also go. Three players surviving for phase, keeping the clean sheet for the time being. All good in the hood. Okay, so it's another lovely, lovely anti-eco, James. It's a, it's a round in which you can make money, where you can feel safe, where you can have security. Where all is well, you can get stats, James. You can pad your stats, you can feel good about yourself. That's what this round is for FaZe. That said, they're against Eagles, and Nico is one of the players with the Eagles. And he has shown capabilities with the Eagle that likely put him as maybe one of the best, if not the best, Eagle players players in the in the world at uh, in recent times. So maybe there's not <laughs> maybe there's not much comfort or security against the likes of Mouse Sports. Maybe it's not as lovely as you as the picture you painted, Dan. It was a lovely picture, wasn't it? There's meadows. Meadows and fresh fresh flowers all over the place. But that's, that's a good start. Still Nico's creeping, though. He's looking for that opening onto the B-bomb site. There might be a player to catch off. Ooh, wow. Was that just a sink? That was two bullets from Rain. That's nice. That's nice. I don't know if it was... Well, did he have full armor? I think they dinked each other, but I think uh, Chris J dinked. Rain through the wall. That's how it looked to me. Very, very slow dueling here from Mouse Sports. So, what's the plan here for. Oh, Nico has made his way into a bullet. I think Spiddy was on the rotation, but the rotation will not happen after all. So. A slow eco round, one player picked off, and Mouse Sports will be back on the bye. Back on the bye. 
And this time, uh, the orb should be featured on the likes of Chris J. And you would imagine that, I mean, the usual thing you would see in a round like this, with loads of utility, with the orb and so on, you'll see A play. You'll see, or rather, play around the A side of the map for the T side, because they want to gain, or they want to use those those weapons, and you want to get the most use out of the Chris J. And the A side of the map is where you can do it. So, um, interesting setup here from FaZe, actually. Uh, just only a two-man setup. They uh, had loads of focus towards sewers and connector this round, which is quite interesting. Again, for the, the reasons that I I, uh, I highlighted, the most common play is going to be early around the A sites. And phase one of forward positioning. It's not paid off for them, though. They have offered themselves up to Mouse Sports in early engagements, and they've come up short. And now Mouse Sports have that three versus two, and phase are in a spot where they're going to gamble on A, and they have to make a play. a has got to be the guy to make the big play. The T's are spread out, but there is opportunity for a uh, trade to come in, but Fa Fa AZ won't get the first frag. That leaves Kishima alone. He's going to try and get into a get into position as fast as possible, but Mouse Sports are not going to charge in on that frag, on the basis of that frag. Not, not, not looking to make mistakes. Oh, the timing. Kishima may have been spotted by the T's in that situation. Indeed, Nico's holding the angle, and he will prevail. First round loss for FaZe. They've had good success in the previous rounds, though, so a buy will be of no issue or little issue in this one. Five to one. Mouseports finally on the scoreboard. Lowell up there with four kills. Still early days in this uh, first half of overpass, but it's a good start from Faisal overall. It is. It is a pretty good start, that's for sure. And they have the opportunity to break Mouseports. It's not that Mouseports were, you know, in a situation last round where they had five players survive. They actually lost a few, so damage to be done here by FaZe should they win the round. And already again, FaZe offering up so much early aggression with forward positions there. Mouse Wars looking to respond. Nico could be, he could basically unravel the rounds for FaZe with this aggressive play, this solo play that he's so good at making. That's why he's often going for it. When you're up against Mouse Wars, you have to expect plays like this out of Nico. He's so notorious. I can't emphasize that enough. Simple pop flash does the job. Alu easily taken down by Nico, and there's one more player on the bomb site, which Nico has spotted. Dangerous, a dangerous game to play against Nico, but Kiyoshima will win it, but the trade is there, and Mouse Sports will claim the round. And do you agree with this very aggressive CT style so far, James? Well, it depends on how much money they have. So they have enough money to have a somewhat terrible buy. Um, they have a money to force by here, so one would expect some less aggression, perhaps. But it depends on what they want to do. If, if they are trying to break Mouse Sports in terms of personnel early within one round, if they think that will ruin Mouse Sports for the rest of the round, then definitely worth doing. He's looking for the close quarters engagement. Unfortunately, it's not going to work out for him. We've got this mouse board side now streaming into the bomb site, maybe sensing weakness. Blood in the water. They're going to start charging and update that tempo. No answer. Oh, and just about makes it out. 12 HP on him. Carrigan everywhere but there on Dennis. So this might be a safe situation for FaZe if they can't make their way into the site. Nico's already on the flank, so he's not looking to allow any save. But it seems the retake will continue, so Nico on the high ground may be a massive problem for the FaZe clan as they continue on. They don't have any kits, so they're taking quite a long time to come in for this retake, and it's surely not going to work out for them. Nico on the high ground takes Alu down, Carrigan looking behind him, and I don't even think he's got time to uh, save anything here with 16 HP. Nico will finish him off with the crouch peak. So that's the phase economy gone. This will be an eco round for them, but they've lost three rounds in a row already, so it should be good to buy in the next one. Yeah, it's it's interesting because FaZe has so many ways to approach this. And a lot of teams would wait. They you know, you we wouldn't play aggressively against the T's straight away. You would you would want to feel out how does Mouse Sports want to approach their buy rounds. I will try to put myself at, at least uh, at, at as least risk. There we go, got there in the end. Uh, as least risk as possible, just to see the kind of style that they want to play. Are they going to be offering up very risky plays so that I can take opportunity, or are they going to are they going to play very slowly? Um, am I going to be in a position where I can force them to have to run set pieces on the bomb side? But instead, you know, we just saw very aggressive play from FaZe. They didn't even allow any chance to make uh, 
Mouse Sports have to make plays in the mid to late round. They sort of gave Mouse Sports opportunities, should they win just straight up engagements, to have three versus twos or four versus threes, you know, type advantages in the early round, not even the le the mid round, which which puts you at a massive disadvantage in, in the CT's uh, perspective. So it's a strange approach, and I hope they make an adjustment moving forwards on the next buy rounds to play a little bit more passively, just to see, just to see how Mouse Sports responds to that, and maybe they can get more picks in that instance. But for now, it's just about damage for FaZe Clan, as Mouse Sports will finish with all the bodies on the B-bomb site. They've left themselves a good time in case something goes wrong there, and there seems to be improvement in the Mouse Sports approach to anti-ecos. Some of these players are getting tagged. Carrigan. Oh, the information play. Dennis, though, from the back. Saves. Probably saves the round there, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, I think so. Because Carrigan's likely be getting two kills. Then anyone, anyone else on the site is going to turn around. There are two players on the other side of the bomb site. So that is a round saving situation from Dennis. Five to four. Phase back on the bye. Everybody's got Kevlar. Ali doesn't have any grenades, but um, that's not the worst thing in the world. Since he's your part, generally want him to be holding angles with his AWP. Many awkward moments can be found with an AWP with his uh, grenades in his hand. So Nico may be sensing a lack of utility, charging through B. I think it's the first time Mouse Sports have done this, this game. Now, oh dear, Kiyoshima, not going to have the right angle there, doesn't peak in time. AZ would have been spotted as well, but that's an early advantage there for Mouse Sports. Yeah, that's just Nico. Like, this is the thing about Mouse Sports, is that Nico works B, and that's what he does. He does it by himself, and he will he will actively look for picks and engagements. So, you know, I'm always surprised if a team's too caught off guard by him. That said, the passive approach is working out much better for uh, for FaZe because Mouse Sports are pushed to make the plays. That's what Nico did. He made the play on towards B. He took the risk by pushing in, and he managed to get the frag in that instance. But on the other side of the map, Mouse Sports are pressed to make the plays, and if they're not too coordinated or on point in that sense, we can see that FaZe can express an advantage and pick up the kills. And that's exactly what's happened in this instance. Four versus three for FaZe. And Mouse Sports have limited utility. Two smokes and two Molotovs is good enough to try to make a set piece work, but Rain goes for the push here. They got a four versus three advantage, 30 seconds to go. And the push comes in from the CTs. Oh, Karakun, that's a massive 180 from him. The bomb is going to slow down the advance as well. There goes Lowell. They've left the bomb behind. Spiddy has the one versus one. He sees the grenade trajectory. That HE of his own will do some good damage to AZ. No time to rotate towards B though, he needs to commit to the bomb plant. That Molotov will slow down his advance. Is AZ going to peak? No, he's going to allow the bomb to go down. And now he's moving up the stairs. Could be stairs or bank. Not too many places though for Spilly to look, but that smoke will be a problem. Spilly backing off towards long. That's where AZ is headed at the moment. He might... Oh no, Spilly's quite deep, so the shadow shouldn't give his position away. But the M4 will be enough. Collects the AWP as well, and FaZe are back to winning ways. Yeah, I mean, I still, I still, n I'm not sure that I like the decision to go aggressive when there's 30 seconds left and you have the man advantage as the CTs, because that's a position of desperation for the T's, and you already have the A bomb site. So if they take B, um, you, like you can afford to take the gamble that they they are forced to go to A, because if they go towards B, you have a a much easier retake scenario on your hands. You still have the man advantage working in your favor, but as we can see, you know, rain pushed out. And De uh, Carrigan was very... I mean, it's kind of lucky that he even managed to make a frag there in, tr in a trade, but... Yeah, Rain, he saw Dennis towards long, jumping and peeking. So I think they had a read it was going to be the A site. But we'll come back to that because there's a rush. Ian Lowell making his way through the flames. will get taken down in isolation. Kishima staying alive. AZ popping up from the smoke as well. Good timing here from the CTs. Carrigan's not gone down, and uh, one of these T's is pushing fast. Point coming in from Spiddy. Only two players left for the T's, but only three for the CTs. Kishima getting the reload while Alu covers the top. And it's Nico alone to try and clutch it versus three players. He's got one kill already. Needs a two-man spray down. Only gets the one. Good damage done to face Clan, however. Bomb planted as well. I like this though from Mouse Force because they they dramatically switch up the pace by just going for the like the super hard B hit. And should there be any weakness there at all, they will quickly be able to 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 deal with it. And another reason that it's quite cool as well is because FaZe have shown themselves to be to want to be quite aggressive. Uh, in the rounds towards uh, towards A or connector or sewers. So if that would be the case, then either there's like less players to defend, or they're out of position, or they get first contacts like in a spot like sewers or something, and then they can get the easy bomb site take. So I think that's actually quite a cool way to to play it as a response to the overall context of phases rounds.
but we're back to a uh, we're back to an advantage here, like a pretty solid advantage for FaZe. They, they, they almost got broken completely, but they seem to have avoided that. I quite like the rounds where a team buys utility over Galils or, or UMPs, etc. Goes for the moving accuracy. Oh, that's dirty from AZ. He's been so consistent for FaZe recently with the clutch kills, the multi-kills. Will this be another one? Three more players to find Kirishima. Spots Dennis' head. Is he going to go and try and stop the plant from going down? You see the push from Nico. He'll get instantly traded after wrecking Carrigan. Oh, I'm not going down just yet. And now the chances are slim. Three versus one, three versus none. Eight to four for FaZe. Starting to get a reasonable score out of this half. It's a, it's a good point, yeah. It's, it's looking very reasonable. It's been close, though. It's been well, close. And that makes me very curious once again. Because we have, you know, this this gets to the point right now where FaZe, they've tried aggre like very aggressive setups. They've tried to be a bit more passive. They've seen some of the tendencies of Mouse Force. Okay, Nico's always going to be pushing uh, around sewers or monster. So an, a nice adjustment for FaZe could be having the passive play um, towards A, but actually playing a bit aggressive towards sewers and or monster just to see if they can catch Nico. Uh, for an earlier advantage. That's probably something that could work, but whoa, okay. Uh, that's the thing. That's the thing that happens, James, with Nico sometimes. He's going to shoot, shoot you in the face with a deagle. Sometimes the crab walk doesn't work. Sometimes the crab walk does work. And that is, uh, that's pretty gross, especially because of the lack of money on phase. There's a chance for an 8-7 now for Mouse Sports. That is a wonderful opening to the B bomb site. Oh, God. Mouse Sports, uh, Nico. Does better harassment than than a psychopathic fan on Twitter. That's, uh, that's a good good comparison. I don't get harassed though. Do you? No, I don't actually. I don't no. really get harassed. No. Maybe if we were hot chicks, we'd, we would. Yeah, if we were hot chicks, we'd get harassed. Flying Mag Seven finishes Rain off, and now phases money's in quite a questionable spot. They're going to. Go for the eco. It's so nice when the deagle agrees with you <laughs> and and gives you the second shot. That's one way to put it. Yeah. It's nice. Right then, we've got a pistol buy. Rain and AZ have uh, forced, while the rest have gone for a half buy. Which is interesting. I do wonder what will become of the buy in the next round. Should they lose this one? Maybe they're in a state of disagreement. I don't know. It's it's, uh, it's it's odd. So far, so good for Mouse Sports is anti eco. Many players around the A site, around the toilets. Kirishima it was with Carrigan. Now Carrigan's gone. Rain and Alu coming in from long. But Mouse Sports, despite Dennis's deep position, they haven't committed to the A bomb site. They're not going to be caught in any trap. And indeed, FaZe will find few players to capitalize on. Oh, lovely stuff from Dennis. Lovely, lovely stuff. I like that approach from Mouse Sports a lot. I think a lot of teams would have just bundled into the site, then it would have been essentially been exposed to uh, to bank, the stairs, and to long at the same time. So that's a good way to approach it from Mouse Sports. Still lost the time on the clock. Bomb goes down, and now Kishima may want to save what he has. AK and Kevlar. Rain's got, he's got full armor, but he's also got a defuse kit. But the ninja seems unlikely. Especially on overpass. Yeah, I definitely like the save in this position. I mean, why not? Why not have more in the next rounds? I was kind of sad that actually Mouse Force picked up that that uh, eco round because I really wanted to see what would be the natural adjustments from FaZe if they were to get the buy in against uh, Mouse Force's next buy round. Again, because I, I would love to see them try to make a play against Nico, like, try to find a two versus one against Nico, because he's so often making plays alone. And your teammates on the ace of the map, they just have to play delay and play passively uh, in the uh, in the first like 30 seconds when you're doing that. Then you can swap the setup to be something like a bit more standard um, after you've tried to hunt Nico down. But uh, but we'll see. I mean, that might be that might be a bad decision as Nico is so good. It's hard to say, but this this will be that round. If, the, if there's an adjustment to be made by FaZe, or maybe they just want to play the same. They've got a fairly aggressive setup here towards toilets. Not as aggressive as it can be, but they are going to get some contact here. In comes Dennis and Speedy. The pop flashes go in. Oh, this is massive. 
crossfire, not quite there just yet, but oh, Ali whiffs the shot against Dennis, gets the second go of it though, won't miss a second time. And now another player comes in, the shadow advantage working well for Alu as Chris J looks for a trade. He's the last man standing for the Mouse Sports lineup as he tries to get something going. Alu all day. Really fast shots in that round from Alu, delivering very quick clicks. Did he hit the first one through the wall? I'm not sure, but that second one was lovely. And this as well, super, nice. super fast. Super fast, Ali. Great stuff. So, nine to six in favor of FaZe Clan. Six rounds. I thought Mouse needed 10 uh, to be a favorite to take this one over the line. You said if FaZe had a good CT side, would you consider nine six a good CT side? I think it's, it's, just, it's just about good enough, I think, for them to have a very competitive match now. Um, but that's, that's me presuming that they're going to have a bad T side. And we'll have to see. I mean, if they win the pistol round, they put uh, poor economy into Mouse Sports. Mouse Sports might make a mistake, and FaZe can just win off of that. That's how fragile it can be in a position like this, which is why it's definitely uh, going to be a little bit more favorable for FaZe, of course. But let's we'll see if they pick up the pistol round, first of all. And then also how their, their T rounds look, because, you know, Carrigan, maybe they've been doing some work on this map. Maybe they've, they've uh, picked this map as one of the maps to focus more on. I, w I would presume so, actually, because I believe this is their pick, no? Chris J is changing his mouse, which is why there's a short delay. He's changing his mouse. He's changing his mouse. I hope it's to the same mouse. I hope it's not to a different mouse, like if a we, different model or something, or a different mouse entirely. If we bring up the scoreboard, I'm not sure that's possible. So Chris J is changing his mouse, and then AZ said, is Dennis changing his mouse as well? <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, so awesome. The, I love how BM that is. That that's BM amazing. is real. But that's like witty BM, so, so I, like, I love that. Yeah. That's that's awesome. That's really good. Really good stuff. Three rounds between these two sides. I mean, when you have a score like this, a 9-6, the pistol rounds can change things dramatically. Assuming there's no there's no uh, no failure in the following anti co anti force by rounds. You're either neck and neck or you have double the score of your opponent. Chris J has five frags as well, James, so he's not really been going off so far in the first half of our sports. Which is definitely what FaZe needed to survive. Chris Jade not to have a sick time of things with his AWP. Oh, that's cute. It's a cute little elephant, James. It's pink. Looks a little bit sad, though. Like, it's got the concern. It's, eyes it's are concerned. so beast. Is that what you're, is, is that what you're conf concerned about? Chris J. Why um, can't we be more positive with, with at the elephant body image? Well, I guess if it was standing up, it would just look like a normal elephant. Except the fact that it's pink and has almost rhino tusks. It just looks so concerned. Like the eyebrow, like the slant of the eyebrows, makes it look incredibly concerned. I would be concerned too. There's guns going off all over the place. Mm. It's quite the juxtaposition of the of the of what's going on. It's funny when you're in a gun store and you see like uh, rich white people, presumably shopping for fancy things to go and shoot elephants with, which I think is pretty sad. Anyway, the T's moving through the connector area, trying to isolate any people with a uh, suicide wish. Not gonna, not gonna find any just there. Chris, oh, hello. Okay, Massports fancy themselves a pistol round. Alu, sure to die. Everyone's dead, Dan. Everyone's dead. Dead, dead, Jim. But not as we know it. They got shot down. They got shot down, Maine. I always make it when I say shutdown. I always make want to make a comparison to like a Windows 98 computer or something. But then, you shut down like my education, James. But I, didn't you I shut got, down your education? I got denied. Well, I tried to go back, but I got shut down. I got denied. It says our education system only gives you one chance, James. Oh, they told you to go away, did they? No second chances. Anyway, um, we've got <laughs> a trade coming in. Early on, hard to uh, segue out of that. But it's it's all good. Well, uh, let's talk about it. It's an eco run. No, it was no, it's not. There's deagles. There's a, there's a trade kill. There's it's a force buy. It's a force buy. So the round's lost now. I might as well talk about your Kishima. Oh dear, it's gonna run into Nico. Nico, why are you alive? How are you alive? Fair enough then. Fair enough. Ray's found himself the M4 though, so he can do some damage. He needs. He really needs to get some damage. Like two frags. Oh, he, he even got the one bullet there. But so did Nico, and <laughs> he had no helmet, so... Don't have to tell you who will win that fight. 
at 9 to 8 then, and phase day 4 short with their buy round, their force buy, sorry. And that means that we go 9 9, most likely, unless something. Let's, no, not, that won't happen. That surely won't happen. He will go 9 9, James. I don't expect Mass Force to capitulate in this situation. Some teams, you never know, but Mass Force. I believe, I believe in Mass Force, and. Uh, Based on what? I just think they're. <laughs> I think they're good enough not to get ruined by four Glocks and a P250. That's what I believe. It's what I want to believe. It's so what I do believe. It's the reality you choose to live in. It's what I do believe and what I want to believe. It's what I want to be true. I think that's a better way of saying it. Chris J has done good work for his side. He has died with his honor firmly intact. Oh, Kishima's picked up a toy. So he's trying to... Uh, I mean, I think he's thrown that in the wrong direction, to be honest. Because... I was wondering if it would have actually landed in the party area. But no, it's fine. They can't find it. So he forces them to spend some more money. I respect that, Kishima. Dispose of the dangerous items. Do it. Why don't they have a metal detector? That would help them. A metal detector. I can see you going around a beach at four in the morning with a metal detector. I've seen people do that in London. Well, it's quick control of connector for AZ. And it looks like FaZe have been actually played out of Suez. Mouseports aggressively took it, even though FaZe, I, I believe, threw the Molotov. Mouseports still were able to push forwards into Suez. So FaZe's early control or map control attempt is not going to go as they had planned, so they have to. It, that's going to slow the round down down a lot, I think. That said, phase they should be able to work towards A, but they won't feel too confident going A long with no AWP. And mouse force are pushing A long with two players, so could get some action there from Rain potentially. Kyoshima also going to be seeing the push from Nico. Gets Nico as well. Mouse sports. Interesting that they went for the push there. Won't work out this time. Chris J will deflect rain towards A long, but FaZe, they seem committed towards B now. Dennis showing FaZe his knife, but they're not interested. And down he will go. 3-3 three to three though, this is still uh, doable, but mainly for FaZe for the next 20 seconds or so, because the CTs are all separated. So the numbers game can work if the angle's being held correctly. So far, so good for FaZe. Nobody else in the A site. Chris J will he dare go for the repeat. Of course he will. Spots Alu. But he doesn't have enough HP. That only shows the top of his dome. FaZe take the lead once again. There is money on mouse bots, but it's not spectacular. Speedy's going to drop the AWP for Chris J. Everybody will have armor, and most people will have quite good utility. That's a nice headshot from Carrigan. So at this point, it's interesting to see. Like, who's going to come out on top? Because I feel like Mouse Sports now have the advantage. Again, feeling like they're the better team of Raw and that FaZe have, will have a harder time on the, the T side. That makes me think, okay, Mouse Sports should be winning from this position forwards. But obviously, this is a very important point. This could be the round where Mouse Sports tie things up. It could be the round where they are able to savage the economy of FaZe. Chris J just... I thought he was going to be a bit afraid to take this pick, but he's actually going to find the headshot in the end. Going in for a second go of it. Utility almost gone here for the CTs. They're quickly scrambling to get towards the, the A bomb site as they now detect the push. Kishima coming up for a, a late flank, but it might be too late because Spiddy and Lowell are holding down the A site. Bomb's been spotted, which means the full team's going to make their way. Two players here. 50 seconds, but it's a two versus five. And FaZe will have to be afraid of the flank. There's no flank coming in just yet, but Nico is staying deep in B. No need for him to push. They could, there is chance for a uh, flank to come in with the time on the clock. So he will just bide his time, make sure no one goes into B. Meanwhile, FaZe are burning the time that they have quite a bit. Again, they've got five players to find, almost finding the first one. And he will not be afraid to extend further. Lowell tags 2 HP. He's got to be careful. Down goes Dennis. But there are 18 seconds and still four players alive. Creeping around the truck now. There goes one player. And then there goes the other. 10 to 10. Horrible situation for FaZe. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's all good. What, can, what else can we say? That's that's a pretty meaty shot. Yeah, I thought initially he was like kind of afraid to take the pick, but then he like said, like, actually, no, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to go back in. So Maswell's take a decisive advantage. I say decisive, it's only going to land them ahead by round, and they're only going to have... Well, I guess they should have a pretty good economy lead. So I wouldn't say it's decisive, but it's definitely... Uh, it's there, it's an advantage for them to use to win this game. What's the second map again between these two? Dust 2. Dust 2. I'm pretty sure. Day 4. I have it right here. It's Day Dust 2. Day 4. That is... Yeah, mouse balls are winning that one. <laughs> Fairly sure. We'll have to see though. To wait and see. Ooh. Dennis picks off Kiyoshima. So it's just a matter of time. Formality. The unceremonious exit of all of these T players. That's uh, so a PT50 kill from Rain. Oh. <laughs> well, hello there. Why, hello there. Got himself two kills. And the round is over. So we'll see if those two kills come into play later on. Money wise. Oh dear. Technical pause. Somebody has dropped from the server and somebody will be soon to return. So I do wonder now, so Kishima's back. Does this mean JKM was just going to sit on the bench? Like, are they paying six players full salary until they decide that they no longer want one player? And then will they keep that player until his contract runs out or somebody wants to buy that player? You know, so you get some of their investment back. Yeah, maybe they're just, I mean, as you say, like, you'd want to keep him on just in case things don't work out with Kishima somehow. In the first month or so, at least. I would say, so it's pretty. He's pretty locked in. He's probably locked in a in a basement somewhere, James. What do you do? I mean, if that was me. I'd go. I'd go to uh, go to the Bahamas or somewhere warm. Yeah, but they could call upon him to play. He's pretty on call. Look, man, I'm on the bench. I'm going Bahamas. <laughs> I'll play. I'm just gonna no, have ping. You're locked in the basement, James. You're not no, going to the Bahamas. Ping. Stay Cayman, in the basement. Cayman Islands. I really want to go to the Cayman Islands. I want to go to Iceland, I want to go to uh, South Korea, I want to go to Japan, Hawaii would be nice. It's really far away though, really, really far away. Eco Town for the FaZe Clan. They will have a juicy buy next round. I want to go to Madeira. Ooh, Spitty getting wrapped there. Oh god, oh god. It's happening, James. They've got the Tech Nines. Mouseball's playing a bit, too, a bit too forward there without the information to reposition in time. They get caught in bad positions. They get fragged. Now Mouseball's have to clutch. The bomb is ticking away. So three versus three. Dennis comes up the stairs to knock down Super Kiyoshima. He's going to find himself Dennis. Is, well, sorry, Carrigan as well. Dennis will find himself, James. And then he will find Ali. Alu can do this, I believe. He's got 9 HP though, but he's against two Orpers, so it just takes them to miss a shot each, and he might be able to... St I mean, they have to defuse. Are they on the defuse? Yeah, they are. Alu goes to the peak. That angle is being held by Chris J, and that's the round there for Mouse Balls. But that, that got too, too close. That got way too close. They shouldn't really have been able to necessarily plant the bomb. Yeah, they did really big damage there, and this is, this is starting to count the damage that FaZe have done on these two eco rounds. Because if they start to win now, then you have to wonder if mass sports are going to have enough to hold on to the end. They have a, a two round lead, but it's a fragile lead. So these slow <coughs> rounds that we've seen with not much, they have done significant damage. They've done harm. They've maimed, but not killed mass sports. So then mass sports continue with the two orbs that they had in the last round. Ali will bring out the third Spitty was pretty far up long. He's moved back now. We have no smoke from FaZe here, which they're going to regret. Nico was smoking that off on Mousebots' T side every round. And FaZe have lost a player and have nothing to show for it. Simple picks. That is what Chris J wants to do. He needs to use your utility to stop him from playing his game because it's pretty hard. He's a hard man to stop if he's allowed to do that. 
Maybe it's still too early for new phase. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Chris J gets the kill there, and that's really annoying for phase because. <laughs> Oh man, they thought it was safe, but they were wrong. It was a lie. There's a snake, there's a scorpion in their shoe, James, in their boots. And now they're dead. They just got picked off one by one by Chris J. That, that is the round. Yep. That is the description. That's what happened in this round. Chris J went around and picked people off. Because the, the, the guy that dies to the Tech 9 of Chris J, that's almost, that's just like two frags because. I, d I forget who Chris J killed first with the Tech 9, but it's, it's a spot where the other guy that dies, like he, the reason why he's moving there is because he feels like it's safe because his teammate is right there, you know, without any expectation of there being a T there. So, yeah, a really big play from Chris J to do that, to get aggressive. It's why it's why he's uh, scary on Dust too. Yeah, because he wants to he wants to do this all the time. Yeah, but you don't expect on a map like Overpass Chris J to be able to do things like that. But he's been he's he was allowed to. Now Nico's coming in as well. So perhaps our predictions are wrong. Mouseport's looking really good to close this one out. Faye's gone for the fourth by now. They can't afford to lose any more rounds. Sorry, this is, they've got they've got about 2k in the bank each, so they're looking for another full buy. Oh, the shadow gives AZ's position away as well as his silhouette. Dennis, now it's his turn to get the multi-frag. Carrigan, can he get the bomb down in this situation? Or any kills? Nothing doing for Mouseports, uh, for FaZe. Mouseports have most of their utility in this round as well, so they barely need to buy anything. I mean, look at the red money. Speedy Pet spends $900. Lowe will spend $300. Buy complete. So it's pretty much as we as we presumed that it, it would... Like, how, how we predict this, to predicted this to go so far. Like, FaZe not really having... They've got one round so far on their T side, and I think that was the pistol. No, no, no. They lost the pistol. So they got one, one buy round, I guess. And that's basically it on the T side. So the T side has been fairly abysmal so far against Mouseports, who are playing a decently strong CT side. Passive beginnings for Mouseports. Three players on B, though. Perhaps expecting uh, an early round or a first minute uh, B play to come in or something similar. Not prioritizing defense to deal with picking our players trying to go for a pick strategy towards A. Instead, more concerned with uh, pressure towards sewers. And give th they give themselves this option to go aggressive there with uh, Dennis on Monster. He gets information that one player's there. Spitty pushes, finds the shadow, but he can't get the kill. That's a big deal for Mouseports. Three to five for, uh, for them now. Chris J is really out of position as well towards the long area. But Face hasn't committed to anything just yet. Wayne and Ali moving into connector. It seems it's going to be a five-man push of the A bomb site, and the split should look fairly solid here. Five versus two. What's the worst that can happen? Nico making his way up short. How far is he going to commit? The five-seven going very wide indeed, but he'll get traded by the third player. But he's slowing things down for his side. Now it's Chris J, and they have no idea where he is. But he's going to have three players to find in varying positions. So once he makes his position known, the rest is going to be somewhat difficult. Spots a leg from Alu. Trying to reposition, but he sees Ali's gone. Three players to find. Timing is real. And Alu will come back to the well and clear the well. When he would be, I don't know, whatever. So this is this is where those rounds where Mouse Force play the anti-force by suboptimally, where things get a little bit weird because they should have way more money than they do. I think they're in a spot now where they probably just spent all their money just after one loss. Uh, yeah, they've they've got between around average of two thousand dollars across the players, and they should have much more than that. They sh they should have basically a full buy's worth if they lose this round, but that's not the case. And you can see that makes things weird now because Chris J goes down early. And that puts the CTs at a disadvantage. And again, if they lose this round, all of a sudden they're going to give FaZe the opportunity to play against an Eco and then get to 13-14. But FaZe have to, they have to play the advantage correctly. That's also a thing here. So they've gotten the picks. They've cleared out a lot of space. One thing that's really nice in this spot is to make sure sewers, is, uh, sewers and uh, connectors clear. And that means they have all the map control, so they can always go back to B or back to A because, it's, because they know that it's clear. Nico's trying to make the play. 
to get Mouse Wars back into this round. He hears a bunch of sound cues. This is, he's going deep right now. Nico has to deliver. There's frag number one. He finds the bomber. Oh my god, Nico gets a second one. There's a third player looming. Now the rest of his teammates can come in based off the communication, the information that he has. Does he get the next frag? Oh, he loses it to Alu. But has he bought his team enough time? Three versus three. 35 seconds, and they don't have map control towards either site, so they're going to have to gamble for it. Alu throwing this mic towards A. But is that where they are headed? It doesn't seem so. That's not going to pull a rotation towards B at all. Speedy is making his way back from long, but there are still two people deep in the B bomb site. Then this is going to be a huge problem here. Surely he just spotted Carrigan. The monitor flying his way as well. Going to move forward. Don't know if they heard the sound cues. His teammate's going to distract. Can he get one? Can he get a second frag? That's the bomb down as well. 10 seconds out. Rain has to collect and plant. Oh, Speedy's going to push through the smoke. Oh, it's straight oh in the my face. God. Mental clutch from Rain. I think Speedy made the right play there, but Rain just too strong. Yeah, that's nuts, isn't it? Like, what do you do there? That's such a weird situation because he has to come off the bomb. And and Spitty's in a position where he's committed to, to, to fight as well. So, so the, you just, just who lands the shot at that point? Who lands the shot? What a ridiculous round. Yeah, but you have to give credit to Nico. He heard uh, Alu making sound cues, but rather than going to kill him straight away, he's like, okay, I know where he is. I can get past him without him detecting me. So if need be, I can come back and shoot him later, but I can make a bigger play by taking other people by surprise, yep. maybe led into a false sense of security by Alu's forward position. That is awesome decision making. Yeah, N Nico, he emb embraced the fact that he had to make a really big play to get to get his team back into the into the rounds. And he did that. He did that in a big way. Nice pop flash comes in for Chris J. The 5 7. Nice flash. Free frag. AK for you. Chris J picks it up. Now it's phase with the man disadvantage. Now they have to make the play to get back in this. But teams often don't want to favor a pick based play because if you lose that situation, you're down to a 3 versus 5 and you probably lost the round. So they're going to go straight for. Uh, an attempt that should land them on a, a bomb site. They should be able to trade onto a bomb site. But mouse balls actually have a good rotation onto A, so they're going to be able to deal with this pretty well, I think. A lot of activity around the stairs for mouse sports. Alu gets a sweeping Chris J, and there goes Nico as well. It's his turn to get quick multi frags at AWP. Spitty, though, has got a very nice angle. That may stop a plant from going down. 25 seconds, high flash comes in as well, but a bomb's being planted for CT. So, phase ahead of the curve in that respect. They know one, the man's behind them, but where are the other two? Level towards the bank with the UMP. Dennis coming up the stairs as well. Stuck behind smokes. This is awkward for both teams, but mainly for phase because. They don't have either side of the bomb site covered at the moment. Low coming out with perfect timing as well. Rain has a clutch. So far, so good. Can't get a second frag, though. Mouse Sports match points. Yeah, that kill from Spiddy in the back, as you say, like having to be to be forced to actually plant for CT stairs instead of planting for toilets is massive because there's a guy on toilets, so they can't fall back there. They can't push CT because there's guys there as well. So as you say, they're kind of stuck in just... They're going to be in bad positions. They, they, they will be in the disadvantage advantage position. So it worked out quite nicely for Mouse Sports in the end, thanks to Spiddy. And things are back to normal, perhaps, for uh, Mouse Sports. They're back to the buys. FaZe, do they have money? I'm not sure that they sh have a lot of money. So tactical pause, I imagine, from FaZe, as they're about to get, well, they're about to lose, potentially. Tactical pause, FaZe. Yeah, AZ has the money. Well, he's got 2,700, so he doesn't have the money. The Mahonies. He can drop an AK for a teammate and just go. I think in this situation, it would make sense. I mean, ideally, you drop the AK for AZ, but such is life. But I don't know. I mean, they have an option for AZ to drop an AK and to go two AKs AWP. But uh, perhaps he's somebody you want wielding some kind of weapon as opposed to just being running with a Glock. So it is Tech-9 and Utility. Perhaps this means a B play. Yeah. I think I think that's generally what you want to do. The thing is, because they have Ali on an orb, they can try to actually play the A side of the map. But looks like they... Are they going to do that? Ali's actually going towards B. They, they can also, because of Ali, again, they can also try to punish any... any Forward plays. 
And on overpass, I think it's quite worth doing that because there are so many aggressive options for the CTs that you might, you know, more often than you will on other maps, you might get that pick. So it, it, because Alu has the op, might as well try to use it in the early parts of the round before you go for the rush where it's going to be harder to use it. And also, they're, they're picking up some information here. You can see AZ, he, he spots one player on on short, but Nico spots him as well. Now Nico's going to go for the Pico Monster. Oh, Ali's on the angle already. This is going to be awesome if Ali gets the kill. Wow, that's so cool. Because Nico got part of the picture. He wanted the full picture, James. And he got punished. Yeah, not much utility on our sports. Can flash over the top. That's quite a risky maneuver, but maybe they, they don't expect uh, FaZe to have an AWP. They know they're short of money, which would explain why they started started with three people towards the B bomb site. Maybe expecting a rush, because that would make sense for FaZe, or at least a general play towards B with the Tech 9s, the close ranges. And they can get closer to the site to begin with than a uh, potentially. Great flash from Dennis. Only the one kill for him, though. And this is going to work out for FaZe, it seems. Chris J in a one versus four making his way for the hero play, then he's like, wait a minute, it's one versus four. And um, we have a few rounds. We're about to get our loss bonus reset. We have next to no money in the bank. It's not as easy as we want it to be. I think the next round might have to be an eco. <laughs> as you do. Just casually shoot Ali in the chest. 13-15 coming up. So do my sports eco, or do they force buy around the orb? I think they should eco. I think they just because they only need one round, and their bonus bonus will be building, so they can always force buy him around afterwards if they lose that. So I, th I think I think save full buy force buy, I think is the the course of action. I think that's most logical to me at least. Because otherwise it's force buy force buy force buy. Yep. <clears throat> so they need to play the Gauntlets game, and let's play a game called Chris J saves his AWP in a round where they are woefully un un unequipped. Protect the VIP, but everyone's got the P2000, and it's uh, Chris J with an AWP and armor. So some kind of weird version of some kind of weird perverted version of protect the VIP. Protect the VIP. Were you one of those guys who would team kill the VIP? Uh, no. I like playing as a VIP, although you didn't have any bullets as a VIP, so you actually often run out. Run out. I think you had the... Because you just had the you USP. Magazines. It was 12 of 24, I think. It's like... So you got 36 bullets, basically. And to use those bullets sparingly. Else you'd run out, and it's very awkward when you run out of bullets as a VIP. I did ask... Uh the, the, the developers, if they ever considered putting VIP in the game. Although, to be honest, it would suck. It's better left as a memory. Probably, yeah. Uh, also, it probably easy. exists already, like, as a mod on someone's... Yeah. Someone has a server it's with that mod. It's too easy to be toxic with that. So, there we go. FaZe making their way... Well, FaZe, Kiyoshima of FaZe, at least temporarily, making his way into the B-bomb site, going for the crab walk as well. It is a fallible crab walk, as we've seen in the pistol round. Will he check Nico's position? There we go. So that's going to be the rotation for phase, which is good. It's good for both teams, because now it's Operation Safe Chris J has stepped into uh, for mode number two. It's gone from plan A to plan B. Or rather, plan B to plan A. As they leave the A bomb site with the protection squad. Like a gang of Hell's Angels, fat bearded men in leather jackets. <clears throat> also, what are those guys who go around like are some kind of uh, force in America? I don't know if it's Hell's Angels, if they have a different name. Hell's Angels, Angels is the biker gang. Yeah, it is. The biker gang. What are, you, what are you thinking of? Well, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to think. You know, they go around and like, you know, we, we're here keeping the peace and all this, st this stuff. That's the, yeah, definitely not the Hells Angels. <laughs> definitely not them. Oh, Chris J still alive. He and, and he manages to survive. So, the the key man for the side, the man almost leading the charge. I mean, Nico 
is up there with 27 kills, but uh, so actually he's almost at parity between the first half and second half, so I can't <coughs> say most of it was on the T side, but it was quite explosive. Anyway. You, were you thinking of Dad's army? No. Dad's army. No, 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 no. They're, okay. not, they're not in America, are they? <coughs> Chris J and Spidey moving forward in the towards the toilets area. Chris J will move back somewhat. Phase with a passive start. It's so important that uh, that Mouseports saved Chris J's gun. That was fun to watch. Or interesting to watch. I want to say it was fun. <laughs> it's quite the opposite, actually. Quite quite boring, of course. Let me hide in this corner for three minutes. Okay, it's, it's time to, for my, my team to buy Rami again. With real guns. So, this is, it's, all coming, it's all coming down to this. All coming down to this. Very slow round. Well, my, uh, Phaser it's playing on A long, and it's interesting to see because generally Mouseports haven't put much focus there. Like some teams, like for example, Immortals have the classic Hen1 Phelps setup there. And so I like you, you often see that similar setup from, from Astralis, a bunch of different teams, but but uh, Mouseports haven't been doing it so much. It's only Spitty with a rifle, not even an AWP player. And the push comes in for information. The trade from Lowell. Dennis goes down in the effort. Four versus four. And right now, to see whether Chris J can defend if there's to be a push towards A. Actually, they're going back. Oh, they're going fast back into B. Explosive play. Can the new man, Lowell, hold it down? He gets the first frag on terrain, repositioning into the water spot. He's doing a great job delaying, actually, and really making it impossible for... They have no time to actually plant the bomb. That's the round, probably. Alu has to go get the bomb. Someone has to go get the bomb, James. It's done. It's over. Mouse Sports win 16-14. And that is an awesome win for them because they're going to be moving into comforts. They're going to be moving to their home territory, the dustiest of dusty dust twos. Do you think FaZe overplayed the clock? I mean... Well, they had 10 <clears> seconds <throat> left when they made the play, so yes. <laughs> when they got to the bomb site. So it's not so much that they were beaten as, as they, they themselves. lost. themselves. Yeah. That is, that is very unfortunate for FaZe. And, uh, you know, in a few minutes, they're going to be playing Dust2, so they are probably going to be tilted because of that. But there we go. We'll see how it works out. Maybe that will play to Chris J's advantage, and he'll turn into some kind of, um, I don't know, otherworldly monster with an AWP on that game. That is coming up after the break. We'll see you back here shortly. This time now, my brother. Come.